Oh, shit, hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this has been missing in action for like all day. He's been on the whole time. Because no one knows who you are. He's been away that, you know. Oh my god. Well, I did want to walk the show floor for like 20 minutes and I couldn't, but whatever. Um, I love those pins, by the way. Those are amazing yes, pins. Yes, thank you. Those are, those are my favorite. I brought it because I was hoping you'd be able uh, I'm to happy. Here, let's do, it while we're, let's do it while we're talking. That would be amazing. That's what I left at home. Thank my you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So go ahead, guys. Let's jump in because they will come over and say, ah, you can't. No more. What, you, what kind of questions do you guys have for me? What are you wanting to do as a fan at Comic-Con? Well, so last night we hit up the, uh, um, Thank you, so much. you know, well, we had to figure out a way to get into preview night without having to wait in a nine-hour line, right? And we did. Um, and uh, we got in, and I just beelined straight to the Lego booth because I wanted the Baby Groot, I wanted the... Princess, Princess Peach's castle, and I wanted the, um, what is it called, uh, Darth Vader ship. The, um, any, uh, what is it? The TIE Fighter? No, 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 it's like, it's like this really cool black ship that's like, it's a, it's, it's, so all these sets are out in literally on August 1st, so it's like so silly that I'm like, it's, oh, I get them like three, what is the date today? I don't even remember, like, first. Yeah. yeah, so, oh, I get these like 10 days early, it's like, Whatever, but anyway, so, you know, I, I, I was like, yeah, that's what, I was like, beeline for the Lego booth, and then I really want to try to find some, um, I, I want to go back and try to find some original art from uh, EC Comics era, like stuff that was auctioned off from the William M. William M. Gaines collection, uh, you know, if I could find a really beautiful uh, piece by, you know, Jack, or, um, what is his name? Uh, Johnny Craig or, or um, uh, God. Uh, anyway, whatever. There's all these amazing artists back. In, uh, even a Cayman piece, whatever. Just anything from like, you know, Tales from the Crypt or Quantum, any of those old EC comics. I, that, that's my like holy grail. And I literally saw them as we were going in, but we had to be at a thing. So we didn't have time to stop. And I saw that they had some up top and I'm like, and I'm pretty sure they were originals. I'm pretty, because either that, I, it, I, I didn't even have time. I was like, I wanted to go and just be like, are those, or, I, we didn't even, we were just, uh, although we did, because I, I was prioritizing fucking Lego sets over, but whatever, whatever, whatever. There's a lot of stuff, I mean, that's the thing, you walk the floor and it's like, there's stuff, you, if you spend enough time in there, you will spend more money than you should be spending. It's just, you just have to, it, it, there's just every corner you turn, there's some amazing thing and it's yeah it's so but nothing this is the first year that I that I haven't had a thing that I'm like I want this thing and I hope I get it I gotta figure out a way to get it there's just I have I don't have one I think part of it is a lot of the places don't really have like the big exclusives like Lego used to. they don't have them this year yeah I don't know if it's a supply chain you know issue it's like you know oh the we couldn't get them over here in time or you know with all the weird you know um, uh, uh, docking, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Why. In addition to the way you infuse your love of all of this stuff into the show, something I love is the way that you can take these, like, super ridiculous moments, but also bring your humor, but also bring heartfelt emotion. And I was yeah. kind of wondering how you managed to, like, balance all of those things. You know, I think it's, I think it's important to... You start with just figuring out what is the, what is the, what is the really bird's eye view story um, and, and then understanding the characters really well and knowing what the their emotional uh, in, uh, you know their their relationship with that story and each other um, and then you kind of just build off of all that stuff and, and then and, and then of course it's like comedy is is so important but then yeah it is like a balance of like you know we want to have these funny 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 moments it's the same thing with my video game same thing with everything I'm doing, um, you know, it all starts with a really solid story you break, you know, it's like, okay, what is the story, and then how can we make these characters have a real impact on the audience in an emotional sense, you know, how can we make the audience relate to them, you know, I mean, in Solar, it's a bunch of aliens, but you, but you can relate to them in, in, in a way that's like very, 
you know, heartfelt and sincere, and so and sometimes like you know, I you know, we're totally just being complete little shitbags and hand waving the you know classic sitcom lesson. We're like, fuck it, uh, what did we learn this time? I don't know, you know, it's like whatever. But there, it still it still scratches that itch, you know, of like I need some kind of closure. But then other times it's like, no, no, we're landing the plane really well with like really good emotional, um, you know, uh, an emotional arc, and uh, you know, all the way to like my video game with these talking guns. It's like you know, it's a fucking talking gun, and you you really feel for this. You can you can put yourself in this character's shoes, and you can like. It's not the same situation, but you can relate. You can relate to what this gun is going through and what it's feeling, and uh, and all the other guns don't know about a thing that that's really yeah. I mean, without spoiling, but anyway, yeah. It's it's that's it's that's all just part of it. It's 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 in steps. It's really in steps. Yeah, that's the short answer. It's like everything. Comes, it's all done in in steps. Yeah. That's great. So, yeah. in previous seasons, Corvo was the type A leader, he just wants to get, you know, terraform the planet and turn it into the new Slorp, but this season finds him, you know, wanting to assimilate to life on Earth and, and kind of be one and be the head of the family rather than the head of the team. Um, what made you guys decide that now was the time for Corvo to have that kind of midlife crisis? It, it, it felt right. It felt like, you know, we, the, you know, we always wanted to start the show, episode one, season one, like, I'm I'm a firm believer of starting like deep in you know it's like this isn't like the origin yeah, you know I want to be like you know some unknown amount of months into the show when we start the show you know for the audience um, and we did it on Rick and Morty as well it was like you know I think that's really important it, it, but anyway it doesn't waste people's time but um, but yeah it, it, after two seasons it just felt like yeah this is Corvo's this is his direction, this is his art, you know, this is like where he, he's finally like, okay, you know, I'm, 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 I'm giving it, I'm, I'm, we're on this planet, like, I'm gonna make the best of it. It just felt like there was a lot of story to mine from that, from that, um, version of Corvo, you know, and, and that's really why, because it was like, oh my god, like, if we do that, there's so many things we could do that we haven't been able to do, and that's really all it was, was, like, just, just the excitement of all that stuff, you know. Yeah. And then, so, the kind of humanization of Corvo, I, does that tie in with how his relationship with Terry evolved this season? Yeah, I mean, the thing, that's so funny, the, the, the relationship thing, to me, has always been, like, this... These, these genderless aliens landing on our planet and just trying to fit in and watching a lot of TV and movies and sort of like that having this impact on them of like, oh, the mom and the dad and the kids. And then what makes me laugh about it is it's like they're, they, they read as like two men because we're it's me and Thomas doing their voices, but they're genderless. And, but then they're like having this like, this faux like marriage, you know, and, and even since season one, they, they were like, I guess we sleep in the same bed because that's what they do. You know, they, they, have, they have this sort of like weird respect for our culture on the planet that they want to kind of like, it's so, it, it, to me it just cracks me up that, that, um, that these guys are like, you know, slipping deeper into this like cultural relationship that's not really, but also there is a there is a a, a, a growing appreciation and love, you know, that they all are ha they all are developing for each other, you know. It's like so, you know, yeah. It, it's it's it all feels like it's happening really naturally and easily, you know, on the show. It's really cool. It's really really cool, and I'm really lucky to be working with the team. You know, Danielle and Josh and, and Mike and, and the rest of the writers, it's like insane. Like, it's like really, I'm very, very, very humble and lucky to have um, people like that. You know, and I, on all my projects, everything I'm doing, I have really good support. You know, so I can come with all these crazy big world building. You know, I've got this idea of aliens and and uh, a wall and people and like we do it like Game of Thrones, all this crazy shit. Yeah. And then I've got these amazing like people that are like so excited and just 
come up with their own ideas and just elevate it to the point of like, you know, nothing I could have done by myself ever. It's like, it's really, I'm just really humble and grateful, you know. But Next question is going to be last question. Cool, um, cool. If you want him to sign those while he's answering. Oh, oh yeah, I'm happy to sign That's stuff, guys. Yeah. Go, go ahead, man. Here, you want to pick that up? Oh, yeah. Those actually, we have one signed by the rest of the cast if you want to go for these. I mean, I'll just get them all while you guys, while you guys, uh, while you guys ask. Go ahead. Um, yeah. First of all, I just want to say a huge fan of your work. Thank you. And on behalf of my boss, if I don't ask you this or say this, she's going to be very sad. So, um, we have a mutual friend by the name of James Falsteros. I just wanted to say hi to you. Oh, wait, James? Falsteros. I know that. I'm so fucking bad with names. I know that person. I know that name. Wait, what, how, why do I know him? Well, I think he's able to tell me that he's saying. Wait, was this Sierra? Are you fucking kidding me? That's crazy. Because I'm like, I know that name. High school is a long time ago. Okay, well, I'll tell him I said hello. I was like part of the, um, uh, the, um, I don't even know what it was. It was like the Asian club or something. I don't even know what they called it. But I was like, those were like my, like I could make them laugh. I could make that group laugh. And, the, and, and like all of the um, Hispanic guys, like I get, they, like the, they were my favorite because like I was a class clown and like those guys were just cracking up at me all the time. And, uh, and I loved just being around them. So I was like, can I be part of this? Even though I'm not like ethnically, you know, like, and they were like, yeah, 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 fuck yeah, come, come. Uh, and so I went to a few of those, but um, yeah, that's so crazy. I haven't heard that name in forever. No, it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't Mantika. It was Sierra. Oh, Sierra High. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I switched to Mantika High my senior year, so yeah, he wouldn't know James. But um, God, there was a bunch of folks in that group, and they stuck together. Like they're still friends with each other. And I like. I actually would love to catch up the next time I'm back uh, up north. I'd love to see them. So. Um, and then, as for the interview question, yeah. you have so many years of your health being directing, producing, and voice acting. Yeah. Is there any role in particular that you've done that you feel has been your most iconic so far? Oh, I, uh, it, across all of those across categories? Those, yeah. Do you have anything that sticks out in particular for you? That's a toughie. Um, I want to say. I mean, I think probably Rick and Morty. Well, I mean, you mean like to me, like this, the one that I find the most joy in? I mean, I, hmm. Rick and Morty, early Rick and Morty, like season one and two, probably. Uh, but because it was a different process, season one especially was a different, like, the way we made the show was very different. Um, and it was just so much fun. Uh, and then I, and then after that, it probably would be the video game stuff. Like, I just, I still, oh, I, I literally cannot believe. I just can't, I'm just like, how the hell am I making video games? It just still is insane. I'm a CEO of a video game company. How the hell? You know, it's been like this amazing path of like people believing in me, despite me not having any experience, you know, in that business. And then, you know, um, yeah, it's just surreal. And then, and then building a team that believes in me, that, that has my back, that all are incredible that I respect so much and, and appreciate and um, and just making amazing and we just want to make more we have I have so many ideas for games and and we as a team have ideas for games and it's just like all we want to do is like have enough revenue at, in the company to just keep making awesome weird games and uh, for VR and for you know console and just all of it you know AR and all of it but anyway yeah probably that and then of course I, I mean listen I, I'm I love all of it like I love I love I love all the things and I, I my favorite 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 part of the process is always the creation so like with solar like that period of time when I was like you know I have a sketchbook that's full I have two sketchbooks that are full of solar video games and um, something else and I'm just like I, I have little tabs you know little color like anything yellow with solar anything this with I don't remember the colors but you know and um, just you know yeah like uh, that's my favorite part is like the, the 
coming up with it. The, the idea. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.